Are you looking for an easy way to frame your images and be consistent with the framing and rotation from night to night? Framing is a great way to personalize your images and it doesn't have to be complicated. Watch this video all the way through and I'll show you two ways to do that, both using an automatic rotator and a manual rotator without having to take one image after another and make little adjustments. Let the computer do the work for you. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and I finally have Orion in view over in the east, and I'm gonna use that to show you how to perfectly frame your targets. So if you find this video useful, please hit that subscribe button, stay updated on the latest videos. Let's hop over to my computer and get started. So to get that perfect framing that you're looking for, there's a couple of ways to do it. And the first thing you wanna do is go to equipment, rotator, and if you have a, uh, an automatic rotator, go ahead and connect it. We're gonna show this method first. And if you go to options, plate solving, this is gonna require plate solving. So if you uh, don't already have ASTAP installed, go ahead and install that. Now I go over how to install it in the setting up Nina video, which I'll include a link to that in the description of this video. Uh, if you already have it, great. Go ahead and click on it. And rotation tolerance, I have mine set at one degree. This is gonna be how much error you allow Nina to have with your rotation. So then what you're gonna do is go to Sky Atlas, choose your target, in this case, M42 or Orion. And then we're gonna go to set for framing assistant. Now there's a couple of things in here. You wanna make sure that your camera parameters are correct. Because remember, your focal length of your telescope and your camera specs determine your field of view or this box. If any of this is incorrect, you're not going to have a correct field of view here. So your framing is not going to be where you set it. Now, your field of view uh, is going to be how zoomed this is. For example, if we put one, and we load the image, we're really zoomed in. We can't really see what we're doing. So if that's the case, just uh, make that number bigger. I usually use four. We'll load that, and now we can see that we have a much better uh, view of this. Now, check out this RA and declination coordinates. As I move this box around, notice how that um, will change that. That's telling Nina where to go for, um, for the framing. Now, rotation. That's going to angle the box however we want it. So let's say, you know, we wanted it like this, just for example. Now Nina has its target rotation and its target um, coordinates, which is going to be the dead center of the box. Now let's say we wanted to do this in a mosaic. Let's go vertical panels. Let's re-rotate this to, I don't know, right about there. Now, what do we do from here? So what we're gonna do, let's talk about mosaic first. We're gonna add the target to the sequence. I use the legacy sequencer. And you'll notice that we have, let's get rid of that for a minute. We have M42 panel one. M42 panel two. Now, if we click this box right here and we go to this PC and I'll choose the folder I save my stuff in. Let's just, for example, let's just put it right there. Let's go to panel one and let's do the same thing. And let's save that. Now, Let's get rid of these. Okay, we're on another night now. And we wanna reload one of these panels to use and get more data on. 
we'll go to load target. We'll go to where we saved. So we're gonna work on panel one. And there it is. Now we can set all of our stuff, click play and get more data. So let's trash that really quick. And let's go back into framing. Let's get rid of the mosaic. Let's go back to 125 degrees. And let's, you know, for example, put it right there. Now, what we'll do is we'll add that to the sequencer. So we have that set. We'll go to framing. And how do we rotate? How do we get this to happen? Now again, this uh, goes off of plate solving right here, slew center. We'll click this down arrow, slew center and rotate. So now the telescope's gonna go to the target. And what's gonna happen once it's done slewing, you're gonna see it settling just like it normally does. And that'll be whatever you have your settle time set to. In my case, it's 15 seconds. And while that's settling, what we're paying attention to right now is orientation, RA error, deck error. This is where the plate solving comes in. So now it's done settling. It's gonna take an exposure. It's gonna plate solve it and it's gonna come up with the orientation that it's currently at. In this case, 134.43, it's rotating. Doing an exposure to double check it. And now we're sitting at 125.07, we're within one degree. So it, it accepted that rotation. Now it's settling because it went ahead and slewed. Now it's exposing again. And what it's gonna do is plate solve its way to the target. Now, RA error, we are not within tolerance on RA or deck. We're actually way off on deck. So now I went ahead and re -slewed. And now it's gonna settle. Take another exposure. And it's gonna plate solve again and recheck itself. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? That is my favorite target right there. So now RA error is zero, deck error 11, and we're within. Now, there's another way to uh, do this rotation. So we'll go back into equipment. We'll go to rotator. Let's go ahead and disconnect the automatic rotator. Nina has this really cool feature if you don't have an automatic rotator, manual rotator. And what this is, is uh, if you have a manual rotator, you'll use that. If not, I didn't have a manual rotator. I actually um, just adjusted the camera. And what I used to do when I first started this is I would take a picture. I wouldn't like how it was rotated. And um, I would rotate the camera a little bit, take another picture, and I would keep going that way. Nina makes it super easy. So let's... Um, 
let's go back into framing. Let's do this to, I don't know, 90. Now, let's go back to slew center and rotate. Let the mount settle. Taking its picture. Solving it. And now our target position, 90, we're at 125.07. And uh, if you take a look at this picture here, you'll see the uh, thumb screws that hold the camera in place. If you don't have a manual rotator, you'll loosen those a little bit. And in this case, you're going to um, rotate 35.07 degrees clockwise. If you're off in the other direction, it'll tell you anti-clockwise. And then what you would do is do that until you hit your target. In this case, if you have your tolerance at one degree, it'll accept up to 91 degrees or 89 degrees. If you have a manual rotator, what you'll end up doing is loosening up the thumb screw on the manual rotator and rotate the camera manually, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And Nina will tell you once you're on target. So I hope you found that video useful. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, throw a comment in the comment section or send me an email, hiddenlightinquiries at gmail.com. Other than that, uh, stay tuned for the next video and clear skies. Here's a quick tip. If you wanted to go back to a target that you did in the past, and want the same uh, orientation or rotation and the same framing, what you would do is in the framing tab, you'll click under image source, file, and then what you would do is go to load image. Let's say I wanted to go to this one, M101. And then I would go to one of my light frames, double click. Again, make sure you have ASTAP selected under options and plate solving, because you're gonna need it. Go to plate solver, it'll load it up and it'll have the coordinates. And then what you would do is either slew and center, or if you need a rotation which if you're going to something in the past i would always recommend rotation whether that be a manual rotator or automatic rotator and you would just click slew center and rotate and it will go to that target exactly where you had it in that image and the same orientation